Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and it is the rivalry week for the Baltimore Ravens as we take on the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, 1 p.m. Sunday, November 17th. Should have been flexed, but it is what it is. Today we're gonna talk. You just kind of get into the, you know, the matchup itself, like who ranks where against what, and the things like that. I'll get into like my keys of the game toward the end, and tell you my score prediction at the very end. So let's kind of get into the the preview episode because you guys kind of know how this goes, and let's talk about the offensive side of the ball for both teams. Now I got the stats right here. You guys can't see them, but I got my little board right here. And uh, offensively, the Baltimore Ravens rank number one in yards per game, 440.2 yards per game. In that same category, the Steelers are 18th at 326.3 yards per game. When you look at rush yards per game, the Baltimore Ravens are first at 182.6 uh, yards per game. And then the Steelers are eighth at 138.3 yards per game. Passing, Baltimore Ravens are third. <laughs> never, never thought I'd put that high of a number on the, our past game, but Lamar is just incredible. Uh, 257.6 yards per game, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are 26 in passing, which is kind of misleading. It's kind of misleading. I think I'll get into like why that number is misleading later on. Or I'll do it once I finish these numbers. Uh, they're 26 with 188 yards per game. Uh, Scoring-wise, I mean, the actual points put on the board, Baltimore Ravens are first, 31.8 points per game. The Pittsburgh Steelers are 12th at 23.9. Circling back to that that passing um, yards per game, 188, and toward the bottom of the league. The thing is, they get huge chunk plays. And those chunk plays come after they didn't, you know, got you to play man, and they recognize man coverage versus one or the other they're big receivers mostly pickings and they throw it up and Pickens is probably the best throw it up guy in the league probably next to Justin Jefferson and maybe maybe just Justin Jefferson but right, let's get into the defensive side of the ball the defensive matchup for both teams versus the Ravens and the Steelers which is going to pop off um, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time uh, defensively, kind of sore subject for Baltimore, but here are the numbers. Um, Yards-wise, the Baltimore Ravens are 27th in the NFL, 367.9 yards per game, whereas the Steelers are 8th at 302.7 yards per game. That's about a 65-yard difference, and and that matters. Those that that matters a, a ton, a ton. Um, Rushing-wise. Baltimore is the number one rushing defense in the NFL at 73 yards per game. Pittsburgh not far behind. They're fourth, 87.1 yards per game. So, since Pittsburgh's always been tough on the run, and they're just continuing to do that this year. Well, Baltimore's always been tough on the run, too. Both franchises have had pretty good defenses over the course of the last 20 or so years. But um, this is where it gets kind of uncharacteristic for the Baltimore Ravens and something we've been screaming about as fans for the entire season since that um, opening the opening game miscommunication where Xavier Worthy got that touchdown our defensive our pass defense is for lack of a better word pretty damn bad we're the last in the NFL there are 32 teams in the NFL your Baltimore Ravens are 32, which is unacceptable. Real Ravens fans know this is completely unacceptable for the defense in any category to be toward the bottom of the league. Any. Now, do I know what changes need to be made? I don't. Do I have a like know how they can fix it? I can speculate, but I'm not there. But historically, this don't fly in the purple and black. Good thing is, you got a chance to get better at it. You know, you won't make it to the top ten. 
that if you can get better start now going toward the playoffs, it'll bode well for your team, especially with as well as the offense is playing. But ranked last in pass defense, 294.3 yards per game. Coming off what Joe Burrow just did to us last week and, and Jamar Chase, and still, you know, squeaking out a victory, is a testament to what the offense is is doing and 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 i will not completely crap on the defense there was a period in the game where they got about five or six straight stops which allowed the offense to find their footing because the offense was searching themselves that last game too so not to completely crap on the defense they did find a way to get some stops um some, some fourth down some punts which allowed the offense to get the train rolling and get back in the game but as a whole it's not acceptable at all the Steelers are 19 in pass defense at 215.6 yards per game. Scoring defense, which is one of the things we led the league in last year. We're 25th, 25.3 uh, points per game, and the Steelers are second, 16.2. This, The matchup with the Ravens offense and the Steelers defense is going to be epic. It's going to be epic. It's going to be a for real heavyweight fight. Like not what we saw last night of a real heavyweight fight. The other side of the ball, the Steelers offense versus the Ravens defense. Turnovers. We're going to give up yards. Turnovers. Opportunistic. Turnovers. Opportunistic. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, they gonna give up yards. The other teams know something about our pass defense that we don't seem to know yet. And I, I say yet. Let me, let me, let me get off kilter for a minute. I'm, I'm not ready to throw Zach all away yet, like a lot of people are. I'm not. Young man, I'm sure is putting in the time. I'm sure. Because he looks just as frustrated, you know, when they pay into him on the sideline or whatnot, than that as the rest of us. So, and, and they all have stepped up and said, "Hey, this this ain't right." Marlo said it, uh, Zach said it. So they ain't trying to sweep it on the road. Hey, right, look, we stink at pass defense, so we got to fix it. And I'm I'm fairly confident that it can be fixed because you got time, you got time, and with your offense playing like that. That kind of has really helped us out. But at week 11, week 12, this 32 needs to try to make his way to 28. By week 15, 16, needs to try to make his way to 22. By the end of the season, it should be right around 21 22. And if we can get up to 21 22 versus the pass and keep what we're doing versus the run, I have a lot of confidence in, in our team as a whole. A lot of confidence in our team as a whole. A few more numbers that I think will be important about the uh, Ravens Steelers game. Uh, I talked about turnovers, but sacks. And looking this up, I. Did not think we were as high as we are, but we're fourth in the NFL in sacks with 31. The Steelers are 22nd with 22. But for some reason in my mind, the Steelers front seven seems like they have more sacks than that. Maybe it's the timely sacks. But for us to have 31 and be fourth in the uh, NFL, when you look at it in totality, is a really shocking number to me. The number of sacks and the rank. And when you think about it, I mean, Tavius had two last two weeks ago. Um, Matabika had three last week. And, you know, spattering of sacks here and there. You know, Kyle jumped off the porch with six and a half. Calvin, know what that is. So that's pretty accurate as far as sacks. Um, pressures, which is, you know, there's a huge debate in the Ravens community about pressures versus sacks. Uh, we're fourth in pressures. Same ranking with 142. So we're fourth in sacks, fourth in pressures. The Steelers are 20th in pressures with 113. 
So a lot of Raven fans like don't really like to acknowledge the pressures because they say we need sacks, like pressures don't matter. But in a sense, they do. If you don't have a, a accurate quarterback that can throw on the move and throw with people around his feet and whatnot, pressures affect that quarterback. Whereas you, your most composed guys are your guys that can move, pressures may not affect them as much. They may have good pocket presence. So it depends on the quarterback how pressures affect the the game. Uh, yards giving yards after the yak yard yak giving up. That's the, the last statement. The last uh, stat right here I have for yards giving up after the catch. We're four, fourth in that. So all three of these numbers I just presented to you, we're fourth in. We're the fourth worst team as far as giving up yak. We've given up a 1,426 yards of yak. The Steelers are 13th in it. They've given up 1,130 yards of yak. So that, for those that don't know, once the receiver or back catches the ball, the yards they get after they catch it. That's yak, yards after catch, self-explanatory. But we're fourth in the league at yards giving up after the catch. Uh, I think Jamar Chase has a lot to do with that, but still, that's one of those unacceptable numbers, in my opinion. Now let me give you a few little tidbits from the offensive side of the ball. Ravens are 30th in sacks given up. That's the good number. We've only given up 13 sacks uh, in 2024. O-line in that right is doing better than I expected. Lamar Jackson has a lot to do with that. And the play calling has a lot to do with that. But 30th, which is a good no, a good 30th in sacks giving up at 13. The Steelers are 12th at 24. Uh, they're on their second quarterback, as we all know. Justin Fields started the season going 4-2. And, and even after a victory, they made the switch to Russ. And I, they haven't lost since then. I think Russ is 3-0. and So that, that puts them at 7-2. But um, I think that's going to change. <laughs> uh, as far as time to throw, the Baltimore Ravens are fourth in time to throw. Another good metric for the offensive, for the offense period. 2.89 seconds. Again, offensive line, Lamar doing what he do in the pocket, and play call. Uh, and the Steelers are sixth in time to throw, 2.80. Not a significant number, you think, but that extra means a lot. And that's about how fast that is. That extra, that means a lot for quarterback processing, defenses, routes, and where to throw the ball. And, you know, seeing if a blitz coming, that, that little instance makes a huge difference. Third down percentage. I mean, converting third downs. We are fourth in the NFL and converting on third down at 47.2%. This was another shocking number for me. As much as I feel like I complain about us, you know, blowing it on third down, and that's probably mostly defense. That's probably mostly defense. But uh, we're 47, I'm sorry, we have 47.2% third down completion rate. I almost screwed that up. <laughs> uh, Steelers are 13 at 40%. So they're about 7.2% lower than us, but still, in the top half of the league at 40%, uh, converting third downs. And that's third downs of all length. Third and short, third and long. It's just third downs, period. Red zone percentage. And red zone percentage incorporates scoring touchdowns in the red zone, not just scoring at all. Red zone percentage is you score a touchdown once you get in the red zone, not kick the field goal or do anything else to turn it over without. It's scoring touchdowns in the red zone. The Ravens are first. 76.7% red zone scoring percentage. So if we get in the red zone, three out of four times, we putting that thing in the end zone. Whereas the Steelers are 50%. That's a, that's a huge number. You get in the red zone, you score three out of four times. You get in the red zone, you score half the time. 75% is greater than 20, or 50% in every metric ever. Since the history of metrics, that's always going to be better. So if we get in the red zone, we got a shot to get there. We got a shot to get the lead. And and our red zone defense ain't been bad. We just been giving them big plays. Jokers struggle once they get in the red zone on us, but they score from beyond the red zone, which is nuts. All right, what I'm going to do at this part, I'm going to go through a bunch of different categories. And if either team has a player in the top 10 in that category, 
we're going to mention it. So we're going to kind of get an idea of like league leaders and where individual players stack up in this matchup. Uh, first, we'll look at is passes completed. Um, do, they, do either team have anyone in the top 10 of that? No. Uh, Joe Burrow leads that category, matter of fact. Passes attempted. Neither team has a guy there. Again, Joe Burrow leads that. Passing yards, which is going to be significant. And the reason I I mentioned these two, because Lamar is second in the NFL in passing yards, but he's not even in the top 10 in passes attempted or passes completed. But he's second in the NFL at passing yards with 2,669 yards. Passing TDs. Lamar's tied for first with two other people with 24. Joe Burrow has 24. Baker Mayfield also has 24. Lamar Jackson has 24. So he's tied for the league lead in passing TDs, which is extremely efficient. Because again, like I mentioned, he's not in the league leader in passes completed or passes attempt, but he's number two in passing yards and tied for first in touchdowns. Tells you a lot, which will lead to the next category, passer rating. Lamar is number one by far. A whole 15 points. He has a 123.2 passer rating. The guy that's number two in that league is Joe Burrow. The Steelers don't have either one of their quarterbacks you know, in either of these categories so far. And again, they've switched quarterbacks, so they probably won't be up here in the lot of, but I'm just going to show you how good of a season Lamar is having, too. Uh, passes intercepted. Neither team has a guy there. Sacked. And again, keep in mind, Steelers may not have anybody in these quarterback categories because they're, Russ has played three games, Justin Fields played six. So if anything, you may see Justin Fields' name in any of these. Uh, but sacked. We're not up there in that. Passing yards per game. Lamar Jackson is fourth, 266.9. Huge, huge, huge improvement over the, the narratives when he first came in. He's proven that he can throw the ball. He just needed an offense to allow him to do that and the freedom to let him do things at the line and stuff like that. Uh, passing yards per attempt, 9.3. Lamar's the league leader in that. Passing attempts per game, again, it's Lamar's not up there because he's efficient. He's efficient. Adjusted passing yards per attempt, 10.62. Lamar Jackson's number one. Net passing yards per attempt, Lamar Jackson's number one, 8.55. Adjusted passing yards per attempt, Lamar Jackson's number one, 8.95. Passes completed per game, Lamar's not in it. The efficiency is just shown. Completion percentage, I'm sorry, pass percentage, Lamar's seventh, 69.1. Interception percentage, which is a number that I'm extremely proud of. No way to be seen. No way to be seen. Passing TD percentage, first, 8.3. Sack percentage, fifth. Fifth. That's a good thing. This, a, this is a good fifth. Like, being 31, 32 in this category means you get sacked a lot. So he's fifth in the league at 4.32 as, as far as getting sacked, but that's a good number. Uh, QBR leads the lead, 76.8. Game winning drives, Lamar has two. He's tied for fifth in that in the league. It's a bunch of guys with two. And again, passer rating index 148. Lamar's having a heck of a season. He's the league leader or top five in a bunch of important statistical categories in the NFL right now. I was talking about the, the rushing numbers, you know, and kind of spotlight individuals in that. Um, rushing attempts. Derrick Henry is second in the NFL, 184. Najee Harris is eighth at 157. You got two Alabama guys, two guys wore the 22. You know, Najee fell in after Derrick. He was Derrick, supposed to be Derrick part two. Great. Two good running backs. I think we're going to see some. I'm going to say a lot of explosive runs, but we'll see them guys banging in there and try to maybe break something later on in the game. But both of them are capable of doing it. As far as rushing yards on the season, Derrick Henry is second. Uh, Saquon's in front of him, but Saquon has played his game this week already. Um, Najee's not in the top 10, but which is not, not necessarily bad. I think Najee got like 600-something yards. He just didn't crack the top 10. Rushing TDs. 
Derrick Henry leads the league with 12. No Steelers there. Um, rushing yards per attempt, Derrick Henry 6.1. 6.1 yards per attempt. But we also have Lamar in this category at number three. Derrick Henry's one, I failed to mention. Lamar's number three at 5.9. No Steelers in the top 10 in, in yards per attempt. Rushing yards per game. Derrick Henry second to Saquon. Saquon has 113.7. Derrick Henry has 112. Again, no stiller. That don't mean they not good. It just, it just lets you know how good our offense has been so far and how good Derrick Henry has been in our offense. Him and Saquon are having amazing years, and he, they're one, two in most categories. And then lastly, we'll talk about receivers, the receiving aspect of it, and league leaders and things of that nature. Receptions, like as far as catches, neither team has a guy out there in catches, but that doesn't mean that we have bad receivers on either team. It's it's quantity, no, it's quality over quantity. It, it's more what you do once you get the ball versus how many times you get it with with this set of receivers on both sides. Receiving yards, um, top ten. Zay Flowers is fifth. 688. George Pickens is ninth. 639. So you have two top 10 receivers in the NFL in this game. As far as receiving TDs, Mark Andrews is eighth with five. They don't have a guy in the top 10, but that, that means nothing. <laughs> with the way our offense is playing, that might change. I mean, our defense is playing, that might change. Uh, yards per reception. Rashad Bateman, 16.2. Didn't expect to see that name there. Actually, when I was scrolling down this, I was expecting to see GP for, for the Steelers. But Rashad Bateman is ninth in the league. Yards per catch, 16.2. Drastic, drastic improvement. Hope he can continue to ascend as the season goes on because he's going to be a big part of making his offense do what it do late in the season. Receiving yards per game. George Pickens is tied for 10th with 71. Uh, just touchdowns total. Like receiving, rushing, Derrick Henry leads the league in that at 14. And they don't have a, a guy. But side note, it's crazy that Jalen Hurts and Saquon are two and three in that category. <laughs> but that's not our game. All right, let's look at some defensive leaders. Or both teams and see if they how they rank uh, as far as NFL statistical statistically uh, interceptions. Marlon Humphrey is tied for third with four interceptions on the season. Uh, Beanie Bishop is also tied for eight with three um, on the season. So you got two guys that are in the top ten in interceptions in the season. Uh, tackles, solo tackles. Roquan Smith tied for eighth at fifty three. Uh, they don't have a guy on this list, and we know Roquan makes a boat load of tackles. As far as combined tackles, that's solos and assisted. Roquan is fifth at 97. Great number for Ro Roby all over the place. Sometimes the tackles don't seem um, significant, but every now and then he'll flash and get a, a tackle for a, TF a TFL or uh, um, no gain or one gain or something like that. Or he'll just straight up bust somebody head. Uh, tackles for loss. T.J. Watt, tied for seven with 10. Force fumbles, T.J. Watt, tied for first with four. Passes defended, Marlon Humphreys, tied for fourth with 10. Sacks, Kyle Van Orr, still in the top 10 with seven. After that blistering start to the season, he'd cooled off a lot, but he's still in the top 10 with seven. So when I look at the Steelers offense versus the Ravens defense and I try to find the, the mismatches that the Ravens can take advantage of and, you know, point out where we may be a little weak at in, in this matchup. I look at um, the Steelers right tackle, which is kind of the same mismatch on both sides. Both right tackles, both as edge guys. Even though they have an elite edge guy, I look at Roger Jones and like all the pressures and sacks and, and 
errors that he's had in his game, that right side of the Steelers' offensive line can be had. Uh, look at Broderick Jones. Look at um, McCormick, Mason McCormick. Travis Jones and whoever plays Edge and Matt BK sh should be able to take advantage of that matchup, put pressure on Russ, make him do things uh, uncharacteristic that he would you know, normally do. Don't let him sit back there and allow those receivers to get downfield and have one-on-one -on -one matchups with uh, our defense, especially deep down the field, which is kind of leading right into the mismatch for us. It's Pickens and Mike Williams. 15 to 20 yards down the field outside the numbers versus just a cornerback. I don't care if that's Stevens, Wiggins, Marlowe, not so much, but even if they got an opportunity to get a one on one matchup by some error versus a safety, Marcus Williams or Eddie Jackson, or even if we play one of them young bucks, I don't like the matchup of us winning jump balls or deep balls or go balls versus either one of those Steelers big wide receivers. So pressure is imperative and they got their center back who's a rookie, but still pressure is imperative to come from the right side of the Pittsburgh offensive line, left side of our defensive line to get home. Stopping them from running the ball is key because if we can stop them from running the ball, we don't have to give them one high matchups and give them man-to-man -man coverage as much. So we got to get pressure, whether that be with four, with five, no more than five. But we got to get pressure. If we can get pressure with four, it's going to be a huge, huge advantage for us. Stopping the run first, though. Stopping the run first. Now, when you look at the matchup from a Baltimore Ravens offensive perspective and the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive perspective, the big matchup is T.J. Watt versus Roger Rosengarten. And I, my opinion is, and I saw this, I had this opinion before I saw this, that I think Roger, even though his PFF number is bad, I think Roger will have some success versus TJ. I don't think he would dominate, but because TJ is not a run through you guy, TJ is technically sound, finesse moves, very good finesse moves, and then once you work on those finesse moves, then he'll try to run down your throat. But he's not a run down your throat guy. I think Roger can compete with that. Not say win a lot, but I think Roger can compete with that. Um, TJ Watts got a 93 PFF rate versus Rosengarten's 58.5. Doesn't look good. But I'm more concerned with Hayward versus Farlele. That concerns me more than anything, mainly in the run game. Uh, Keanu Benton versus Farlele. That concerns me more than TJ Watt. Because those two guys can stop the run. And if our run gets stopped, then we got issues. But I don't think they're going to stop the run. My thing is run at TJ and just I think Hayward's more of a nuisance than TJ in this matchup because we've actually been running the ball at a high clip. And if they stop us from running the ball, I ain't gonna say we're in trouble, but it don't bode well because then TJ can get in that wide nine and just empty his bag on Rosengarten. And let's not forget the left side, Herbic versus uh, uh, Ryan. You know, Ryan's been playing some great ball, but Herbic don't suck. Herbie Dome's up. So their front, that interior four or whatever, because we're in nickel a lot, so it's going to be four guys. Very impressive. Um, Queen and Wilson. Um, statistically, Wilson's playing better than Queen, but we know Queen's going to be super amped up for this game. And um, our secondary versus, I mean, our receivers versus their secondary. Just got to make the most of it. Got to get yet. When, when catch your opportunities, because the last game, when it mattered, because... They make the most out of this 7-1 record or whatever in the last eight games. But a couple of those times, like even one, my first Ravens game, I think it's in that. No, it ain't. Yeah, it might be in that eight, but we didn't play starters. The first game I went to at the bank, I mean, we played. We didn't play starters. I think not RG, did RG3 start that first game I went to in the bank versus the Steelers? Because we didn't play in starters. And then the MVP, um... That was MVP year. The next year, like, we've sat guys or Lamar's been hurt. So, 
that record to me is kind of skewed and i know he's won in three versus them but that long extended record it is what it is and the last game the receivers dropped everything everything um might as, well, might as well had chris goal on their hands but i think if we can run the ball and not let tj just pin his ears back and go at roger and give him his whole bag i think we're gonna be good on offense I'm gonna wrap this thing up with my score prediction and just putting all the numbers together, all the metrics, all the individual matchups, where we can win, where we might lose. I still like what we have. Um, when you balance it all together, the teams are on paper, kind of even with the exception, with the exception of the Baltimore Ravens as defense. Uh, both have both are good against the run. Uh, both are efficient offensively. The Ravens been a lot better than the Steelers offensively, but the Steelers defense being better than the Ravens. So it's going that clash of Ravens offense versus Steelers defense is what's going to determine this game. If the Ravens can stay on path and keep steamrolling like they're doing, it don't matter what the defense do because I think we'll be good. If the Steelers kind of establish themselves as slowing down the Ravens, then it does matter what our defense does <laughs> because we're going to have problems. But overall, I still think the Baltimore Ravens are going to come out on top. And honestly, what I think people are going to, they think they're going to see a shootout because of what we give up on offense. I mean, what we give up on defense versus what we do on offense. I don't think so. I think this is going to be a classic AFC North battle, a huge chess match between both coordinators. I think you get a better version of Zach Orr tomorrow. Um, and I'm going Ravens 24, Steelers 17. With the Steelers, you know, I'm going to start with the Ravens scoring late or the Ravens defense having to stop them from scoring a touchdown late. That's what I'm going. So I think Baltimore Ravens going to win this game. I appreciate y'all for coming through with this preview. Um, if you're still here, like the video. If you like this type of content, subscribe if you have not done so and share it on your platforms, whether that be Twitter, Blue Sky, um, Reddit, whatever social media platform you have or use, share the video so the reach can be extended and we can get more people in here to enjoy this content. I see y'all tomorrow for the watch party. Make sure you tune in. We're going to have a bunch of fun no matter what happens. Um, first, second, third quarter trivia. Uh, we're getting closer toward, no, we're in the middle of the month. So the, we got you got time. You got time. But I appreciate y'all, man. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace and love.